Now we will move forward in creating and reproducing our effigies for this necklace. We will be indeed replicating and reproducing the scarlet macaw that I discovered. And there's really only a few scarlet macaw effigies or representations that are known in the prehistoric Prescott culture. One of them is the one that I found. Another one is in this catalog or this book publication. And that is a pendant that you can see displayed here. This is believed to be a representation of a macaw. This book is produced and published by the Arizona Archaeological Society, and it covers the data that was recovered at the site, very important site called Sundown. Sundown had a high frequency of argillite, whether it was produced there or imported, we don't know, uh, likely both. So I'll cover what we're looking at here from bottom to top. You can see we have everything is true to size. So we have our centimeter measurement. We have round disc beads. And then this next row is very, very important. I believe a lot of these pendant looking shapes are likely effigies that were worn in between disc beads, shells, turquoise, or all of the above. But this object here is a representation or a likely representation of a javelina. Now that's important because we thought javelinas came into Arizona much later, but now we're starting to re-examine that and we believe prehistoric people likely encountered them much earlier or they encountered them when traveling into Mesoamerica or pre-Hispanic Mexico. Moving up, we have more decorations. It's my belief some of the larger examples, like this one in the center, the two off to the left and right, are likely pendants, but some of the smaller ones are very likely effigies that were once again strung up between shells, uh, disc beads, so forth and so on. Um, we will be indeed replicating some of these examples for exact size and measurements. We'll be using that as a reference. Finally, we have more disc beads and of course the scarlet macaw representation, which is very, very fascinating. Once again, these are so rare in prehistoric Prescott culture to get recovered. So it's a real treat and uh, a fascinating object when they are found. Now when recreating the scarlet macaw effigy, I start by using smaller pieces of argillite and I'll remove some of these higher spots. So you can see we have a high spot right in here, and then we have a high spot along this edge. Once I have a more symmetrical piece, we can further shape it into kind of a modified football shape. So I'll start by removing these spots. Again, argillite is a soft material, so it works well when grinding it on sandstone or any rough abrasive stone, even sandpaper. But sandstone does the job and you have a large surface area to work the piece. You can see we've already made significant progress. But I'm just removing those high spots. You can see the piece is fairly symmetrical now. There's a few imperfections I can work out as the process goes along, but now it's time to remove these corners. So we are going to create our oval shape and that will match the body of the original, the body and the face. So I just grind the edge on a piece of sandstone. You don't wanna to work too fast or too hard and remove too much. You can see just a few passes really rounds that edge. As you can see, we have these edges round and they're not perfect and that's okay because it's still quite thick and overbuilt. As we continue to work with the piece and recreate the Scarlet Macaw effigy, I will reduce mass little by little. So what I'm doing right now is I'm creating a taper from the belly into the tail. So I'm just gonna swoop that in towards that edge. 
So you can see I'm removing material right here. So I start a little bit below the midpoint and I just remove material into that tail. So we're just getting the overall shape of the effigy. And again, as the process goes along, I remove mass and I make adjustments. So we will round some of these edges after I create that taper. I have the tail tapered in and on the surface you can see I have the etching of the original measurements. So I'm trying to follow those almost exact or very, very close to them. So my next step is to continue working on the piece by removing the corners, rounding the top and getting closer in to that etched line. And I will continue on. Here's the piece. You can see we have the size and shape that's desired. It's about a millimeter short from the original, but that's very, very close. So at this point, I will move forward. I'll take a stone projectile point and cut around where the head meets the body. Very simple task. Now we have the line cut around. So at this point, I'm going to modify this more and the face was smaller than the body. So we'll come in here and remove material about like that. So by following pretty close to exact measurements, it's about a millimeter we need to remove and just a little bit more, just a shade in the body. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at following this line and then this in here. Here's where I'm at with the macaw effigy. You can see I have the shape and size that's desired. It's starting to look more and more like a parrot. I'm going to wrap things up for the evening. It's starting to get dark out here and I'll continue on tomorrow morning. I have a bit more shaping to do. After that, we'll start the facial and body features. The next morning, I clean the stone drill bits free of caked on argillite. Once clean, the drill is placed on each side of the face and spun to create the eyes. After the eyes are drilled, a stone projectile point is used to cut and shape the mouth. Although these facial features are quite basic, additional work must be conducted by rounding the edges of the cuts and removing mass along the jawline. Now the last task is for me to carve in the feathers or some of the plumes. On the original, it had three cuts on each side and then finally drill the hole in the center. And I'm just slowly drilling through the body. Quite an easy task. Here is the macaw complete. You can see we have it drilled in the body and polished with a creosote oil. This is a very, very close replica of the original one that was discovered and located. The only difference is like I said in the tail, it measures a millimeter short. That's it, everything else measures out identically. The facial features, same thing, almost identical. The body, the carvings, almost identical as well. This will make a very nice addition to this prehistoric style necklace. Hi everyone, that wraps up part three of this video series. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button and click the notification bell. By clicking the bell, it will notify you next time we release a video on this channel. We'll see you on part four where we finalize this project.